Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Captain Casey Henderson, and I will be your narrator for graduation ceremony of class 2409. Please rise for the entrance of the official party and remain standing for the rendering of honors, the national anthem, and the invocation. Chaplain Wilson, please come forward to deliver the invocation. Let us pray. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we come to you now with a heart that is filled with joy that this chapter of life has closed and we are awaiting the next chapter which you lay at our feet. Lord, I ask dear Father that you would just bless these graduates, the pilots, that will be in the air as they have earned their wings. Lord, I ask that you would provide the guardian angels to oversee their careers, to be with them, to provide the protection that they need. Father, I ask, dear Lord, you would anoint them for the fight of their life. Lord, we trust you and we praise your name today. We thank you. It's in Jesus I pray these things. Amen. Please be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, I present the 23rd Flying Training Squadron's Director of Operations, Lieutenant Colonel Cindy Tope. Uh, Chaplain, thank you for giving the invocation today. Really appreciate the words. Good afternoon, everybody. On behalf of the 23rd Commander, Lieutenant Colonel Daniel Coughlin, I would like to extend a warm welcome to our families, friends, and distinguished, distinguished guests of the 23rd Flying Training Squadron. I would like to recognize and thank the Army Aviation Museum for hosting this ceremony, also the Garrison and Army Aviation Center of Excellence for their daily support and partnership. Without them, we could not accomplish our mission. To our distinguished visitors, friends, and families of the graduates, this is not the first and certainly not the last significant accomplishment that they will have in their Air Force careers. The strong foundation that you provided with your years of guidance and care got them here today. Thank you for everything that you've done and everything you will do to support them as they excel in our Air Force. 
The mission of the 23rd Flying Training Squadron is to train undergraduate aircrew members in foundational vertical lift operations. Today, we're here to celebrate another mission accomplished as these five officers successfully completed the rigors of undergraduate helicopter training. They benefited from the leadership and professionalism of the squadron's contractor, civilian, and military personnel. I would like to thank that 23rd team, our senior enlisted leader, Master Sergeant Eric McElroy, <coughs> Representing our Amentum instructor team, Mr. Gene Becker, and the Amentum instructor class of 2409. Representing the Order of Dedalians, Mr. Bubba Hauser. Our M1 aircraft maintenance team, led by Mr. Lancetta and Mr. Mowbray, who could join us here today. Thank you for coming out. Also, a special thanks to our active duty and civilian 23rd FTS permanent party members for the long hours that you put in and the dedication to our students. Finally, thank you to Tech Sergeant Gregorsowitz for the leadership and organization that he displayed putting this together today, as well as Staff Sergeant Stedman and Staff Sergeant Brooks for running the rehearsal to make sure that we looked good. And finally, to our front office team and registrar team, as well as the many lieutenants who put together the details of the ceremony. Let's give them all a round of applause getting 20, 2409 to the stage today. Our graduation speaker today is Lieutenant Colonel Stephen Reagan. He is the commander of the 563rd Rescue Group, Detachment 1, Nellis Air Force Base, Nevada. In this role, Lieutenant Colonel Reagan leads 20 personnel across nine Air Force specialty codes to consolidate the 355th Wing and Tent Direction and Advocacy with the 563rd Rescue Group at Davis Mothin, Arizona, and more than 600 airmen assigned to three squadrons at Nellis Air Force Base, Nevada. He also oversees the detachment's program integration office for the transition of the HH-60 Gulf Pave Hawk to the HH-60 Whiskey Combat Rescue Helicopter, directly impacting three separate wings and the future of Air Force's combat search and rescue, test, training, and operational capability. Lieutenant Colonel Reagan previously served as the commander of a test support squadron. In that role, he led an active duty civilian and contract personnel team to support developmental missions. Lieutenant Colonel Reagan earned his commission from the United States Air Force Academy in 2003. He has deployed and flown in support of Operations Enduring Freedom, Iraqi Freedom, and Inherent Resolve. Lieutenant Colonel Reagan is a command pilot with over 2,500 flying hours and over 325 combat and combat support hours in the HH-60 Whiskey, Uniform, and Gulf variants, as well as the TH-1H and UH-1H, and the T-37 Bravo. He is an aircraft instructor and evaluator and served a decorated career, both as an aviator and a leader. Sir, thank you for being here today to share your wisdom and experience with our graduates. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming Lieutenant Colonel Reagan. Thank you, uh, Cindy, for the kind words. I don't hear kind words very often about myself, so thank you very much. Okay, deep breath. This means a lot to me to be here today. It is very important to me to be back at Fort Rucker. So I'm going to have some slip-ups today and not say no so and say Fort Rucker, but I'm going to try to keep it in, uh, try to keep it correctly. But this place has a special, special piece of my heart and will always and it started just um, as a student. So when I was at uh, Columbus, had a countdown to Fort Rucker, I'd walk in every single day, one day closer to Fort Rucker. And then when I got here, it was everything I thought it would be. One of the best times I ever had flying. And then I was fortunate enough after going out, flying the, uh, the mighty HH-60 to come back as a permanent party instructor as well too. Coming off of multiple deployments, a lot of burnout, this, the place is exactly what I needed. To come back into here, to see the student energy that was here, recharge my batteries, and basically was a turning point in my career. And I'll always be thankful for Fort Novoselic, Fort Rucker, and what it did for me and my family, my career. Met numerous instructor evaluators from all different backgrounds in all different uh, airframes, and thankful for them. And then last, my son was born here as well, too. So it's a very special place in my heart for that as well. So yes, thank you very much to Class 2409. 
Thank you, Lieutenant Colonel Tope, and then also the leadership team for having me today uh, to come back here, all these memories flowing into me, and then speak to you today. So thank you very much to the leadership team, again, for having me today. Chaplain, thank you very much, wherever you're at, uh, for those kind words. Mr. Hauser, thank you for being here today, sir. Um, I still instruct techniques today from what Bubba Hauser taught to me 20 years ago. Any other retired personnel, 06 and above leadership or anybody that's here today, uh, thank you for being here. And then also thank you again for the Army Garrison for here as well too. The, the bond and the relationship between the Air Force and the Army that we have here is so crucial and I'm glad that it still continues to be there. Captain Walbridge, Captain Henderson, thank you very much for putting everything together and then coordinating with me before coming here to get everything. Thank you, or Major Bennett, wherever you're at. Uh, thank you for putting everything together for the flight, even though we didn't go. Uh, good to see you again, as always. And then thank you to anyone that had a hand in today for this, um, for this event, putting things together, putting in the long hours uh, as well, too. Thank you very much. Thank you to the instructors, the instructors and evaluators of the 23rd, whether you wear a green suit, a brown suit, doesn't matter. Thank you very much for those long days, long nights, first in, first out, grade write-ups and GTIMs, if you still use GTIMs or whatever program you use now, the unsung heroes that are out there shaping the future of rotary wing leaders and flyers for our community. Before I move on, I just want to speak to all the students that are out there. Maximize your time with the instructors that you have here. I hope you realize the depth of the instructors that you have here. I think in my heart, across all of AETC, the 23rd has the widest and deepest pool of instructors and evaluators in all of AETC. You've got people that are still around that shaped my generation from Bubba Hauser, Jairo McCoy, Rob Zelenka, that entire group that still has an impact on me and my, um, my peers. And then nowadays, I mean, you've got former 06s, you've got wing commanders, you've got every airframe imaginable experience here. You've got UH, 1H, THs, you've got in model Hueys, you've got HH 60s, CV 22, MI 17s and even the inferior MH-53. I wish Colonel DeCaro was here for that one. That was specifically for him. Um, and then you have so many legendary squadrons represented from the members that are here as well too. The 6th SOS, the 20th SOS, the 21st SOS, and then last but certainly not least, the 55th SOS, which a lot of its members taught me how to fly as well too. So. Maximize your time with them. Pick their brains, ask questions, soak everything in, and then turn around and use that later on in your career as I've been very fortunate to. Thank you to all the other 23rd support personnel that are out there from One Charlie's to AFE to Scheduling Kathy. So good to see you again. Thank you so much for what you do day in and day out. This mission cannot go, this squadron cannot go without you. Thank you, Class 2409, for having me again as well, too, and getting to, to speak and meet, you, meet uh, each other here. Thank you very much. And to the families that are out there, thank you so much for sharing this special day with your graduates, with your family members, and then us, uh, the blue team that are here. Through your unwavering support, these five outstanding officers are newly pinned pilots. You've guided them through the good times and the bad and you have always been there with kind words. You've raised them, you've loved them, enabling them to be here today to celebrate this magnificent accomplishment. So thank you very much to the families out there. That's parents, spouses, grandparents, aunts, uncles, brothers, and sisters. Thank you so much. So Matt, Stacy, Justin, Jackson, Joe, congratulations. Today is, it's one of those days that's gonna stick with you forever. It is one that you don't forget and uh, it's gonna build momentum to continue on with your career. So yes, your career is continuing, but it also starts today as well too. So long hours, days, nights, 
planning. I'm sure that there were probably some some friction points in there at some times, you know, when somebody's map maybe got misprinted or somebody's map got thrown away by mistake or you're putting together your low level routes or you're showing up for contact EPs for the first time and who's gonna do stand up and who's answering questions and somebody got something wrong and just just the day in and day out uh, rigmarole. So congratulations, a lot of hard work went into this and like I was saying beforehand, it's not just this last year, but it's also the years leading up to this as well, too. The time that you put in commissioning sources in school to set yourself up uh, to be here and then continue to succeed and uh, continue to support each other for this uh, momentous day. So congratulations. So I've only got one bit. I'll try to keep it short. I know it's very hard for me. Like I said, this place is very special to me. I only have just one bit of advice for you today uh, before I, I step away and get to the, the real part that you're here for, your wings. So Captain Henderson was nice enough to send me some kind of bio information before getting here. And I was reading through it about, you know, where you're from, where you went to school, hobbies, sports. And I was very disappointed when I was reading through it and I didn't see anybody mention baseball on there. Very disappointed. Baseball is something that has been in my life since I was four years old, uh, from playing all the way up through now coaching in Las Vegas. And my son uh, is also plays as well, too. We're basically on the baseball field five days or nights a week. So I was a little disappointed. However, I'll, I'll use that to kind of, uh, my little bit of tie in some advice there. It's how people get me distracted at work, is uh, they talk baseball. And uh, next thing I know, it's I'm an hour in, running my mouth. So whenever I coach, players out there for baseball, there are three rules that I always set from the very beginning. And as I was thinking about it, as we just concluded our season about a month ago, I was thinking about it and I was thinking about coming here and talking to y'all and, hey, what am I going to say or how am I going to tailor this? And I was like, hmm, these rules, I think they can apply to brand spanking new pilots in the Air Force. And I got to thinking about it. I was like, okay, I think so. So hear me out. I know you didn't put it down, but hear me out. Trust me. All right, so rule number one, always keep your eye on the ball, okay? What does that basically boil down to? Be ready. Prepare. That's another one word I use all the time, prepare, but be ready. For all of you, wherever you're going, whether it's CV-22s, HH-60s, or um, in-model Hueys, wherever you're going, you're going to get called, okay? Be prepared. That's also getting to Kirtland, showing up on day one having everything in order for preparing for your flight for that day, for an evaluation, and then going on to your next units as well too. You never know when you're gonna show up on, the, on a day when you're not scheduled to fly, and the co-pilot for that day dropped out, they're gonna turn around and see you. Can you fly? Yes, let's go. So be ready. Also too, whenever your time is called, all of you are gonna be in some type of deployment operations or even civilian search and rescues as well too. Those drop, trust me, Midnight, two o'clock in the morning, seven o'clock, you'll be at a party celebrating something at eight o'clock at night and it's gonna drop. Uh, that's real, has happened uh, several times to me. Be ready, be ready to go. Second rule, respect everyone. And that basically just boils down to respect. In baseball world, that pretty much means, you know, respecting your teammates, your coaches, the other team, the umpires, basically everybody that's on the field. But I also extend it out to parents, brothers, sisters, teachers, and so forth. For you, it's respect everyone from your instructors, your evaluators, your teammates, your classmates, your stick buddies, fellow pilots, fellow co-pilots, AFE, One Charlie's, Intel, all your support personnel. Respect everyone because you're a team and you're all together accomplished mission. And in our community, in the air crew world, we're a team, we don't do anything alone. And lastly, the part of respect is respect yourselves as well too. There are gonna be a lot of good days and there are gonna be a lot of bad days. You're gonna get you know, downgrades on check rides. You're gonna have the worst flight you thought you ever had at Kirtland. Uh, I wish John Edmonds was here right now, which by the way, it's mandatory for every grad speaker to mention John Edmonds into a graduation speech. Um, I had a John Edmonds flight. It was a it was a uh, instrument flight. We were coming in to land at low, and I ruined this ILS. It was horrible, and I ended up busting the ride for it. And I was mad. And I was John. If he was here, I think he remembers. 
And I was mad and I'm slamming stuff down, like, you know, tack frags and everything else like that. And uh, he just calmly, in his manner, always just talked to me. He's like, hey, you know what you did? Go out, learn from it, study, fix it. And I did. So there are going to be bad days. So respect yourself enough. Take a deep breath. Calm. It's not the end of the world. There's going to be other flights, other times. And then go out there and accomplish it. And then the last one is easy. It's have fun. Have fun. I know it's going to be hard. You've been through pilot training now for a while. You're going off to Curlin to continue on that. But take time to sit back and reflect just what you've accomplished and where you're at. And you get to go out and fly day in and day out. Some gorgeous conditions. You're about to go out to Albuquerque flying through there. Absolutely gorgeous. And then you're going to continue on, whether it's at Minot or out in uh, DM, going out to Barry Goldwater, or even out in D.C. Uh, for Andrew's stuff. Have fun. Enjoy. Enjoy your fellow air crew members. Enjoy everybody in your units. Have a good time. Go out and, you know, have a good time on Friday and Saturday nights, you know, in downtime. Enjoy that. Have fun. Cherish this. Don't get too wrapped up in uh, everything. Don't get to your units and worry about, hey, how long is it going to be before I make instructor? Or how long is it going to be before I, uh, you know, get flight lead? If you show up with those rules of being ready, having respect for everyone and having fun, trust me, those are going to follow. Everything will fall into place. So have fun. So enjoy this moment. Again, congratulations on this outstanding achievement. Um, a lot of hard work built into right now. So congratulations to you. Well done. Maybe I'll see you very soon. I'm still around for a little while. I hope to see you again soon. And uh, yeah, good luck wherever you go. Thank you. At this time, class 2409 will receive their wings and certificates. First Lieutenant Matthew Blois was born and raised in Wakefield, Massachusetts. He graduated from the United States Air Force Academy with a Bachelor of Science in Electrical and Computer Engineering. Prior to HDN, Lieutenant Blois was a freefall parachute instructor and jump master instructor with the 98th Flying Training Squadron, Colorado Springs, Colorado. Lieutenant Blois will be flying the HH-60 Whiskey with the 41st Rescue Squadron at Moody Air Force Base, Georgia. He will be receiving his wings from his parents, Kevin and Sandra Blois, his sister, Julia Blois, and aunt, Carolyn Wheaton. First Lieutenant Stacy Gibson was born and raised in Indianapolis, Indiana. She graduated from the United States Air Force Academy with a Bachelor of Science in Behavioral Science. Prior to HTN, Lieutenant Gibson served as a casual lieutenant in the Department of Military Strategic Studies at the Air Force Academy in Colorado Springs, Colorado. Lieutenant Gibson will be flying the UH-1N with the 1st Helicopter Squadron at Air Andrews Air Force Base, Maryland. She will be receiving her wings from her parents, Jake and Kelly Gibson, her brother, Ryan Gibson, and husband, Caden Zimmerman.
First Lieutenant Joseph Perrin was born and raised in St. Mary's County, Maryland. He graduated from the United States Air Force Academy with a Bachelor of Science in Foreign Area Studies. Prior to HDN, Lieutenant Perrin was an executive officer and CSS officer in charge for the 58th Special or Operations Support Squadron, Kerland Air Force Base, New Mexico. Lieutenant Perrin will be flying the CB-22 with the 58th Training Squadron, Kerland Air Force Base, New Mexico. He will be receiving his wings from his parents, David and Tracy Perrin, and joined on stage with friends and family. Second Lieutenant Justin Murphy was born and raised in Denver, Colorado. He graduated from Baylor University with a Bachelor of Science in Mechanical Engineering with a minor in Mathematics. Prior to HDN, Lieutenant Murphy worked as a manufacturing engineer at Lockheed Martin Aeronautics in Fort Worth, Texas. Lieutenant Murphy will be flying the HH-60 Whiskey with the 305th Rescue Squadron at davis Monthan Air Force Base, Arizona. He will be receiving his wings from his wife, Carolyn, and joined on stage by his father, Rick Murphy, and his in-laws, Julie and Roger Addison, and his friend, Benjamin Grothy. Second Lieutenant Jackson Schwab was born and raised in Fredericksburg, Virginia. He graduated from Montana State University with a Bachelor of Science in Biotechnology. Prior to HTN, Lieutenant Schwab was a lab assistant researching vaccines and therapeutics. Lieutenant Schwab will be flying the UH-1 November with the 54th Helicopter Squadron at Mana Air Force Base, North, North Dakota. He will be receiving his wings from his parents, Stephen and Holly Schwab.
At this time, Lieutenant Colonel Tope will present the awards for class 2409. The Military Leadership Award is an award based on military bearing, integrity, leadership, and professionalism. Each student in the graduating class, along with the staff of the 23rd Flying Training Squadron, provide their input to the commander. The commander then selects the most deserving student for this award. The recipient of the Military Leadership Award is First Lieutenant Matthew Blois. The academic award is presented to the individual who best exemplifies the highest standards of excellence through self-study, testing, and academic evaluation. The students are tested in six demanding subject areas. The recipient of the academic award is Second Lieutenant Justin Murphy. The Flying Training Award is presented to the graduating student with the highest flying grade point average throughout helicopter flight training. The recipient of the Flying Training Award is 2nd Lieutenant Justin Murphy. The Distinguished Graduate Award is presented to the graduating student with the highest overall percentage grade compiled from their academic scores, their flying scores, and their flight commander's rankings. The recipient of the Distinguished Graduate Award is Second Lieutenant Justin Murphy. At this time, Dedalian's Silver Wings flight representative, Mr. Albert Bubba Hauser, will come forward and present the Order of Dedalian's AETC Commander's Trophy. This award is given to a graduating student who clearly demonstrates superior airmanship in, those, in the so, several qualities unique to Dedalian's. The recipient of the Order of Dedalian's AETC Commander's Trophy award is Second Lieutenant Justin Murphy. At this time, class 2409 will now come forward and present a few gifts. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, Lieutenant Matt Blois. I was the uh, SRO for class 2409. Uh, I want to start off by echoing some of the thanks you've already heard today. Um, so all the 23rd personnel, uh, our cadre, um, everyone that uh, helped set up today, uh, as well as, most importantly, our families. Uh, thank you very much on behalf of all of us for everything you did to get us this point today. So another round of applause.
Uh, first, Lieutenant Colonel Reagan, sir, uh, we want to extend a thank you to you uh, for cutting time out of your busy schedule to uh, be with us here today uh, and share your words of advice that I know will, uh, will do us well in our career. So uh, thank you very much. And from class 2409, uh, we'd like to present a helmet that is painted and wrapped in the theme of our uh, class patch. Uh, now to Captain Henderson, our flight commander. Uh, sir, couldn't think of anyone um, that would have been a, a better mentor, instructor, uh, and leader to get us through the, the rigors of pilot training. Um, so for all your guidance, all your support all the way through, uh, thank you very much. Um, now everyone just bear with me here while I present this gift. Um, for those of you that don't know, at the 23rd, recently in the past year or so, there's been a resurgence in the popularity of the 90s rock band Creed. Uh, led by a select group of instructors and Captain Henderson being among those. Uh, so sir, to show our appreciation for you, everything you did for us, on August 14th, you and one friend are going to see Creed perform live up in Birmingham. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> I present to you the United States Air Force's newest helicopter pilots, Helicopter Training Next Class 2409. Please stand and remain standing for the Air Force song and the departure of the official party. This concludes the graduation ceremony. We invite you to join Lieutenant Colonel Tobin congratulating Class 2409. Thank you for joining us today.